Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. Today I'd like to review another of the books that I read on my sabbatical. This one is called The Benedict Option by Rod Dreher, Strapline, A Strategy for Christians in a Post-Christian Nation. And uh, it's a fascinating book. It's written by an American Christian for American Christians, but has a lot to say to us um, in the West, uh, the Western West, uh, in Europe and in the UK. Uh, in many ways, America is the kind of last bastion of Christendom, but even there, as, as Rod Reher exp explains, they're feeling the effects of the steady ero erosion that secular culture and individualism and consumerism has had on Christian values and Christian society. And uh, he argues that we've lost the culture wars and actually what's required of us now is to build distinctive, radical, countercultural uh, communities and churches. And um, he, he, he calls this the Benedict op option, and which is named after Saint Benedict, who around the turn of the 6th century BC, um, sorry, AD rather, um, just after the sacking of Rome by the Visigoths, went to Rome and was kind of disturbed by the disintegration of civilization there and the, the loose morals and the lack of, of order um, or, or pursuit of God. And so went off to live in the, in the caves for a while and seek God. And, and after that time made it his life's work to sort of build um, monastic communities uh, which would hold the, and guard the light as it were during the dark uh, ages that followed and, uh, and, and gathered around a rhythm of prayer and learning and uh, pursuit of God and so on uh, and an order of life which, which he, he wrote called the Order of St Benedict. So, um, or the rule of St. Benedict. And, uh, and Rod Reha says we need to, to do that today. We need to find a way through um, these dark ages that are coming. And he, he refers to set maybe a, several centuries for the church where we will be, we become a minority again, but we need to be a creative, radical, uh, and engaged and deliberate and intentional um, countercultural community in the church. And so to do that, he, he gives some kind of bold suggestions for what that might mean. The second chapter, well, the first chapter is about the Great Flood. He describes how this massive change has taken place and we need to build these little arcs that will uh, carry us across the waters. Uh, second chapter is uh, a, a kind of exploration of the roots of the crisis and how we got to where we've got and to in terms of the, the deep ideas that underpin our society and how those have changed over time. Chapter three is a rule for living, uh, inspired by the rule for, of St. Benedict and what I might have to say to us um, today. Um, then he talks about uh, Christian politics and how uh, hands-on localism, culture building, parallel polis making, as he calls it, um, should be uh, a new model for us. Uh, a church for all seasons, uh, the idea of a Christian village, uh, a rich, uh, r robust community that is inter intergenerational, which is very intentional about guarding the tradition and passing it on down the generations. Uh, he talks about Christian uh, formation uh, and, and the implications that should have for uh, pursuing Christian education and uh, maybe even homeschooling if uh, we're, we're worried that our children are, are being formed in the way of secular society and not in the faith. Uh, and we are, are of course hemorrhaging young people uh, in the West. Um, preparing for hard work and hard labour uh, is another chapter. It talks about Christians and work and how uh, our horizons for certain types of work are shrinking due to uh, the pressure that comes from government and from legislation. It talks about sexual morality and uh, eros and the new Christian counterculture and, uh, and all the challenges faced by that. And, and he talks about man and the machine and technology and the challenges as that rises. And in all these things, he, he encourages us to take the Benedict decision of, um, I guess, opting out of that world and seeking to build instead a parallel polis, a, a Benedict, Benedictine kind of communi communities that model a different way of life that is a witness to the world, but also safeguards the integrity of the gospel as it passes down the generations. And uh, it's a fascinating book. And uh, I really, rec I would recommend it to you. It's got some really interesting things. And, and because it comes from an American context, as opposed to a UK context, uh, then it, it has some alternative ways of looking at things. But he, uh, he quotes Alistair McIntyre, who uh, wrote the book After Virtue, um, and uh, who, who made the claim that we need um, uh, uh, during these days, a new, doubtless very different St. Benedict. Uh, and so this book is a timely contribution, I feel, to that whole discussion and endeavour. So I recommend it to you.